Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances to all the Guru Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees from morning Bhagavatam class. Welcome and thank you all for um, joining us on this morning with this with the change. And I really, really am happy to see some of the devotees online. And you expect to see more. This morning's class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances to all the to you, all the Guru Prabhupada. And Maharaj will be speaking on Canto 1, Chapter 9. Verse 19 and the chapters entitled The Passing of Bhishma Dev and the Presence of Lord Krishna. Maharaj, it's all yours. Translation. Okay, Lord Shiva, Mahara, the great sage among the Bhagavads, and the Gila, the incarnation of God, and all of them worry confidentially about his glories through direct contact. Here the ways of the Lord are all Buddhas or persons who know the glories of the Lord in different transcendental loving services. As the Lord has innumerable expansions of his plenary form, there are innumerable pure devotees in the Lord who engage in the exchange of service of different rulers. But now there are 12 great devotees of the Lord named Vana, Nara, Shiva, Kumara, Kapila, Mahamu, Pilar, Bhishma, Janaka, Sukadeva, Goswami, Mali, Nag Maharaj, and Yamaraj. Bhishma Day, where one of them has mentioned only three more names of the twelve who know the glories of the Lord. Sri Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, one of the very acharyas of the modern age, explains that Anuvarma, who the glory of the Lord is first appreciated by the divine ecstatic and ecstasy manifesting the symptoms of perspiring, trembling, weeping, bodily eruptions, etc which are further enhanced by steady understanding of the glories of the Lord. Such different understandings of bodies are exchanged between the soul and the Lord, binding the Lord by ropes, and the chariot driving by the Lord in exchange of love with our Jew. These glories of the Lord are exhibited in his different subordinate devotees, before his devotees, and that is another feature of the glories of the Lord. Sumadhi so Goswami and the Kumaras, although situated in a transcendental position, became covered by another feature of voluntarily to pure devotees of the Lord. Tribulations imposed upon the devotees by the Lord constitute another exchange of transcendental bondage between the Lord and the devotees. The man says, I put my devotee into difficulty, and thus the devotee becomes more purified in exchanging transcendental bhava with me. Placing the devotee into material troubles means delivering him from the evolutionary material relations. Material relations are based on reciprocation of material enjoyment, which depends mainly and material resources. Therefore, when material resources are withdrawn by the Lord, the Lord is sinless and attracted towards the truth of the loving service of the Lord. Thus the Lord snatches the fallen soul from the mind of material existence. Tribulations offered by the Lord to his devotees are different from the tribulations resulting from vicious actions. All those glories of the Lord are expressing more to the great Mahajans like Brahma, Shiva, Narada, Kapila, Kumar, Vishnu, as mentioned above. He is one, and one is able to grasp it 
for by their grace who, who give unto Adanda Shlag and Ajana Salaka, Jackson and Muli Tamil, my test, my Shri Guru Maha, Ma Om Vishnu, Vaya Krishna, Prasthaya Dita, Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Kinamala, Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Bhagavan Pracharya. You may be saying, so soon you are ready. Pastor, you may be saying, Bunch of Papa, to the child who pursued him. Maybe the child for Tita, you know, who had the name here. The Vaishu may come in the home of the home. Tasi Krishna Chaitanya, you know, you know. Shri Madhvita Gadapa, Shri Vasa Vigurna Bhakti Hindi, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama Hare Rama, Rama Dharma Hare Hare. So, the ways of the Lord are understood by the great souls. And for the conditioned souls who have some understanding of the Lord's glories, it's more like the phenomena of material energy, such as many things within the material energy. So um, it's like <clears throat> uh, one time I was visiting Canada. So I decided, along with a few devotees, to go visit Niagara Falls. And Niagara Falls is quite a spectacular feature of the material energy. Now, when you're there, it's impossible to really understand how it's working. It's so powerful and so huge. And so diverse that we see people come from everywhere just to experience this. And many of them understand it's the, the Lord has created this. And so they appreciate the phenomenon of the extraordinary power of our material energy mind he was living. And that's a, that's a feature of the glories of the Lord. But it's not really so important because at least the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita, after describing himself in relationship to all the powerful features in the other world, namely various things like humanities and uh, great personalities, he connects himself with the outstanding qualities that they exhibit and say that in themselves that who likes me that's me. But after he describes a long list in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, is the way the description is found. At the end he said, but what use is all this detailed knowledge because a simple fraction of my you know, power I support and pervade this entire existence. So, from the principle of greatness, it is great, but it's insignificant in comparing to many of the other aspects of his greatness. Um, one of the features that's not mentioned here that reminds me of the Lord's greatness is that he um, acts in such a way as to never take credit for whatever he does. If, if he somehow empowers his devotee to do something wonderful, the devotee does something wonderful, by the empowerment and the other world, and the devotee gets to credit. But actually, it's Krishna. He says, I am the ability of all of the entities. But he also works in such a way as to facilitate and to inspire great activities done, and at the same time, he gives credit to his devotees. That's a speech feature of greatness. Um, 
just to devote from a section in se a second Prabhupada when Prabhupada was also glorified for many of the things he said. He said, my, uh, my greatness is that I've changed hippies into happies. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Please accept my humble obeisance. Sorry, Mr. Shri Prabhupada. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, your voice is not very clear, Guru Maharaj. Uh, from the beginning, um, I was thinking like uh, it's anything uh, can be changed uh, at your side. I don't understand what you're saying. Yes. Um, Maharaj, what uh, what Shimati is saying is somehow there's some kind of a noise when you speak, and uh, we were wondering is it probably you're in a new place or the mic. But no, that's my computer in the background cleaning itself. It's the, it's the fan that goes on. And it's happened before we got the fan fixed, and now it's uh, again happening. It's the fan in the computer that spins, and it does, it does that for cleaning inside. And you hear it, and it gets too loud sometimes. And that's the situation now. This happened you know, about a year ago, and now it's coming back again. Um, uh, this is Pekshi Das, to be separate humble basis as well, Shri Prabhupada. I'll make it really quick. Just a suggestion is it possible to get on using a cell phone, especially since you finish reading? Um, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Okay, well, just a suggestion. I have a technical, technical guy here, and I think maybe he can do it for me. Oh, okay. that would be great. We really want to hear you, Maharaj, like yeah, dying we're to hear every word you say. Yeah. Have you been able to hear me so far? We have been able to hear you, but it's... Not distinct the, enough. Yeah, it's not distinct, and it's really yes. static. And we want to hear more. We really so want to hear more. Yeah, we want to make out. Some, some of us can't make out what you're saying, even though we hear your, your voice. It seems to be like this. That's okay here. Okay, um, we got somebody setting up the cell phone here. Thank you so much, Marge. We just want to hear more. I'm away from my normal position. I'm out traveling, so I'm in a different location. That's that, what I thought. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, we'll do it. We will patiently wait, Marge. No problem. I'm going to make one solution. Let me know for sure. If you can push that in, no, I can't get anybody. No, I will do it. I will do this out. I'm going to try my best. How does this sound now? How does it sound? Is it better? No. No. But my just... suggestion is if you have a cell phone, my eyes can speak to the cell phone. I told you, it's to be the fan. Okay, so we do like this one. Okay? So we do this. We do this. So just stop speaking. Yeah, I'm thinking the phone better and then. Okay. Oh, now? Perfect. <laughs> Can you hear me now? So clear, Mark. Yeah, it's better. I'm so excited. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much, Bishop Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> Is he on mute? Maharaj, if you're speaking, we can't hear you at all now. It just stopped. Okay. No. Now you're here. Yes. yes. How, about, how about now? Can you hear me? Very yes. clear, very Maharaj. Distinctly, yes. Very distinct. Very distinct. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you right, so Prabhu. much, Prabhu. Should I repeat what I said already or just continue? Continue, Maharaj. All right. I'm just happy I, that we can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was uh, referring to Krishna's greatness when he empowers his devotee to do wonderful things on his behalf and the devotee gets the credit. That's one of the features of the Lord's greatness is that he does everything, but at the same time gives credit to his devotee. That's one of his greatnesses. And then I also mentioned how Srila Prabhupada, when he was glorified for the great activities of spreading Krishna consciousness, he pointed to his um, um, devotees. Actually, um, I, they actually said, Prabhupada, you must have mystic power. And Prabhupada said, yes. Uh, my devotees, they were formerly hippies, and now they're happies. I've changed these um, persons who were addicted to all bad habits into, uh, into devotees of the Lord who are exhibiting wonderful qualities. So I was just going through this as a, as a feature of the Lord's um, way of glorifying his devotee as one of his uh, qualities of greatness. Now here in, an, in another aspect of this particular verse, which is really probably the center, is that the Lord will put his devotee into apparently material difficulties. Although the devotee is devoted and he's very elevated in his devotional service, there still may be a little taint or some residue of material attachment there or something that will interfere from, uh, with his coming to the, to the spiritual platform fully. So the Lord will make an arrangement to somehow or other change that. Uh, we see in the life of Srila Prabhupada how before Prabhupada, I, Prabhupada always had the desire to spread Krishna consciousness ever since he heard it from his spiritual master in 1922 in their first meeting. Again, Bhakti Siddhanta repeated that same message again in 1936, just before he departed. But Prabhupada didn't leave India. He, he continued to try to develop Krishna consciousness in India, thinking that this would be the way by which he could have a foundation and then go to the West. But Prabhupada said, Krishna frustrated and took away everything from me in order to get me to the point of actually of fulfilling my spiritual master's desires by going to the Western countries. Um, Prabhupada lost his family, he lost his business, and the attempts he made in India to preach Krishna consciousness were pulled out from underneath him by others. When he was in Jhansi, he had a nice building and he started to preach, people were coming. He even made one disciple in India. But then the building wasn't owned by him. And the lady who owned the building, she was the wife of the governor, and she wanted the building for her own usage. And so using her influence, uh, she forced people, Srila Prabhupada, out of that situation. So Prabhupada had a lot of apparent uh, reverses in his life just to get him to the point of coming to the West and preaching Krishna consciousness. So, um, and that's a nice example because it illustrates that the devotee may want to serve the Lord, but they're not really in line with how the Lord wants that service to be executed. And therefore the Lord may uh, put the devotee into some difficulty in order to uh, somehow or other come to a higher stage of realization and a higher stage of activity. So then we have the example, or actually the verse, that illustrates this in the 10th canto, chapter 14, verse number 8, Tate nukampam shukshamikshamanam 
Bhujaneva Krita Vivakam Virvava Hubir Veladana Maste Jivetio Mukti Padesha Dayabak. In that particular verse, it says that mm, it's interesting if you could put that verse up on the screen. My screen has somewhat diminished. Let me see if I can get my screen back up here. Okay, no. Uh, yeah, see if we can put that verse up. 10, 14, 10. 8, Maharaj? Yeah, that's it. Is the, is the audio clear? Yeah. So clear and so distinct, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Mm, cell phones have overshadowed computers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Technical technological superiority. Okay, this is better for my Oh, that's the gallery. Oh, yeah. well, she's gonna put up the verse. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for her to put it. It's up, Prabhu. Do do you see it? Oh, really? Uh, I just see... There, oh. It's small. Uh, okay. There we got it. Tate nukampam shushimikshimano ujane vakrita kipakam nirvava hupirvaradana maste jiveti omukti padeshadaya bhakti. My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances within his heart, words, and body, is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. When you go down to the second part of the word, Shusha Mikshamanam indicates that a devotee earnestly awaits the mercy of the Lord, even suffering painful effects of previous sinful activities. Uh, the, the Lord, the devotee may be fully surrendered, but still there is residues of sinful activities or still some tendency to act independent. So this is orchestrated by the Lord directly, and it has nothing to do with karma or the influence of the material energy. The Lord does this to curtail the wrong type of mentality and to bring the devotee into a higher consciousness. And the devotee who recognizes that this is the mercy of the Lord prays in that way. And through that prayer, they actually earn a special place in the Lord's uh, uh in the future of for them what is that future that they actually become qualified to go back home back to godhead so um there are difficulties that come by way of the material energy there are difficulties that come by way directly of krishna's orchestration but in any case <clears throat> these difficulties are there for the purification of the, the living entity as long as we they keep the goal in mind. If our goal is to somehow adjust material energy to get a better material situation and see that the difficulties are coming simply in order to improve that, and then what we do is we continually just going from one material situation to another, just adjusting one sees that this is actually an opportunity to take greater shelter of the Lord, to depend on him more, to develop a realization or the intelligent necess intelligence necessary to see how to, to increase one's uh, devotion to the Lord. So there are many benefits that come by way of um, the Lord's um, personal care for his devotees by putting him in difficult situations. And sometimes he does it to allow for them to be glorified. And that is the example you'll see with Bhishma Dev. He apparently is put into a difficult situation throughout his whole life, practically. But he becomes glorious at the end, so glorious that Sri Krishna himself comes to um, 
take darshan of Bhishma Dev in his final uh, um, moments on earth. And Bhishma Dev is giving instructions to others and showing that even though he's in a very painful and very awkward situation, being shot through with arrows by Arjun laying on a bed of arrows, he's conscious and at the same time, He's conscious of what? His service. He's not conscious of, of anything else but his service to the Lord. And he, he glorifies mm, the process of devotional service and he glorifies Krishna. He glorifies Yudhisthira and the Pandavas for being such, so favored by the Supreme Lord that, that um, it becomes non different than Shastra, his words. His words are like pure spiritual teachings uh, so krishna did that to glorify bhishma dev he allowed for Prahlad maharaj to be put into an awkward situation and ultimately come to the stage of uh pure uh, higher devotional service blood was already a pure devotee but he took him to a higher level where the whole world now was able to appreciate his uh, his dedication to the Lord, despite all of the material tribulations that were forced upon him to force him to change his dedication to the Lord. He was not in the slightest moved by that. Same with Srila Haridas Thakur when he was beaten in 22 marketplaces. They only, could, they only thank the Lord for the opportunities to serve in these difficult situations. So these are very great personalities. But even now for us, <clears throat> the Lord will, when he sees that the devotee is very serious, but still the devotee has an inclination towards material life, the Lord will gradually try to move him away. But sometimes the devotee gets stuck. And he can't see or he can't understand what is his material attachment, but it's there. And so the Lord will arrange a, a situation to make, to take something away from them or to give them something that appears to be difficult to handle, but it is for their benefit. And say, maybe a devotee has a wrong association or not that association that is conducive to their spiritual advancement. So Krishna might arrange for that association to be taken away in different ways. Like sometimes a devotee has a material responsibility, uh, say, such as taking care of their parents. And uh, so sometimes Krishna will arrange for something to happen where that situation is no longer needed or necessary. So the devotee gets free from that and can and engage fully in devotional service. That's just a, just a, an example used uh, that may or may not happen, but it is a possibility. The idea is that Krishna, when he sees a devotee is really serious about him, but still stuck in some way or another, in some material conception or material attachment, although it's so slight that the devotee doesn't even see it sometimes, the Lord will arrange in some difficult situation and that'll free them. <clears throat> like with Srila Prabhupada, he took everything away from him. And then Prabhupada, prior to his coming to um, uh, the West, and he was in Vrindavan for I think five years, and he writes about his situation, how everything he had and everybody he knew were like waves in the, in the ocean that they that they hit the shore and then they retreat back into the ocean again. He used a nice example like, you know, uh, people come and meet each other travelers will be traveling from different directions and they'll all meet in one place and then they'll meet together spend a few little a few moments together and then go on their different ways in their travels and explains that that is how the material energy works we come in contact with someone 
we develop a relationship with them on one level or another. And then time takes that all away, and then we move into another situation with a different set of living entities. So a devotee moves through life like that. <clears throat> so Prabhupada, in the uh, quotes one verse in the 88th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, where he says that if the Lord favors his devotees, hmm, I'm not sure of the actual verse. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, it's in the 88th chapter. I'm not, uh, I can't remember the number of the verse, but let's see. You can go down the list and I'll, oh, okay, there it is. It's verse number eight. Yeah. Verse number eight. If I especially favor someone, I gradually deprive him of his wealth, then the relatives and friends of such a poverty-stricken man abandoning him. And this way he suffers one distress after another. Um, devotees of the Supreme Lord experience both happen not as a consequence of material work, but as the incidental effects of the loving reciprocation of the Lord. Uh, and there it is. So Prabhupada, in explaining his own personal experience with this verse, he describes how, you know, Krishna gave me everything and then he took everything away. <laughs> but then after he took everything away, he gave me everything back. <laughs> and then he described in a very uh, kind of a humorous way, he says when he was in America one time, he said, I had my family, I had a wife, I had children, I had a business, I had so many things. Now Krishna took away, everything away, and now he's given me not just a few children, he's given me 500, uh, 300 children, he said, referring to his disciples, and at the same time with no wife. <laughs> So, in a very humorous way, he was expressing how Krishna had taken everything away. <laughs> and, and, Krishna, and Prabhupada says, in relationship to this verse, uh, he says, if the Lord favors someone, he gives them so many things. But if he especially favors him, <laughs> especially favors him, he gradually takes everything away. So um, people don't like this verse so much. <laughs> In fact, it causes hem hemorrhages and hemorrhoids and, <laughs> and uh, miscarriages and a few of the other material calamities that people may feel upon the initial shock of reading this verse. But still, <laughs> it's the reality of Krishna's mercy. And that because when you get Krishna, you have everything. Um, when Prabhupada first started his, his movement in 26 Second Avenue in uh, New York City, he had a he came across this little shop that was once a knickknack shop. They call it a curio shop, a place where there's unusual items you can't buy anywhere. You know, it's just like. Uh, kind of exotic things and unusual things. So <clears throat> the name of the shop was called the Matchless Gift. And uh, that became the Hare Krishna Temple. And when, so when the devotees were fixing it up to make it into a more of a, a place where people could come and meet, they were, you know, doing a little construction here and there, and they were also uh, painting it. So they decided to take the sign down and uh, Prabhupada noticed that he said no no leave the sign up he said this is a perfect name for our society the matchless gift we're giving something that cannot be matched Krishna <laughs> Krishna he's the greatest of all gifts so one who gets Krishna uh, what that means that requires explanations but one who can get Krishna he gets everything <laughs> And one who doesn't, one who has everything and doesn't have Krishna has nothing. 
because everything they have cannot give them any happiness. Mm-hmm. So it's Krishna. And that's so in our own efforts to somehow or other become Krishna conscious, the effort of the Supreme Lord becomes also uh, activated by his mercy towards his devotee, and he helps his devotee come to him in different ways by removing those obstacles, those attachments, those, uh, we might even say, subtle, so subtle, sometimes we call them idiosyncrasies, just a little something within the personality that doesn't, that is not needed for their, um, uh, for their to, to, for them to increase in their spiritual life, it causes more or less a, a kind of a retardation. And you see, if we all look, we can see there's something about. We also can see our own what we are attached to, or what is holding us back to getting that pure, that stage of pure devotional service. It's obvious. We if we do a little introspection. We can see our attachments. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we think, well, I have to get rid of this. But other times we kind of like get a little frightened that, oh my God, what do I do with this? Maybe I don't want to get rid of it. So we kind of ignore that the fact that it's still there. And we go on. But then again, Krishna shows you in different ways that it's something you have to face. And that's another point is that as we make progress in devotional service, um, Krishna is trying to take things away from us. And, or there's something that appears to be a block in our progress in devotional service. And uh, we don't want it, we want to get rid of it, but we find it keeps coming up again and again. And that's a message from Krishna is that it's still there and you still have to work on it. It's not like it's gone simply because you ignore it or or simply because you don't want it like that. So um, all of these are more like subtle things. If we read Srila Rupa Goswami's Upadesh Amrita, uh, Nectar of Instructions, a lot of the subtle aspects of devotional service start to uh, become more clear and more uh, less subtle and more easily understandable especially verses two and three where you describe describes the six things that are favorable for our progress in devotional service and the six things that are unfavorable but in those six things <clears throat> they are more like powerpoint statements each one requires much explanation and comparison in life's ex- experience. In other words, you have to be able to see these things in action and how the more subtle aspects in each one. Just for an example, one of the negative ones is prajalpa, unnecessarily talking. <clears throat> now, that unnecessarily talking has about eight categories within it which describes the different types of prajalpa and how it manifests itself in action. And where does that come from? That comes from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's commentary on those two verses where he takes each one of the six, all 12 of them, and explains them in really, really clear detail. And then you get to see the subtle aspects of the six negative things and then you also see the subtle aspects of the six positive things and then you can understand how to bring about the positive more clearly and again recognize and remove the negative so although Rupa Goswami gives the statements it's not until Bhakti Vinod Thakur really explains it in detail can you actually see it Rupa Goswami, the purports in Rupa Goswami are also giving greater understanding by Srila Prabhupada. But Bhakti Vinoda really takes it into a real, real subtle aspect of each of these attachments or 
uh, benefits. And then you start to see. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example mm, of what is some of the subtle things that one can understand in terms of one's pro progress. For instance, their uh, Vishwanar Chakravarti Thakur describes one particular feature of devotional service where a person evaluates by having these things they are making progress okay so for example he calls it uh, ranga turangini ranga turangini and what does that mean attachments to the benefits that come by way of execution of devotional service as opposed to devotional service or seeing these benefits that come by way of devotional service as indications of one's making spiritual advancement for example wealth is coming followers are coming um, opportunities are coming and one is thinking wow i am making advancement but if one sees that these external features of the results of one's devotional service as the indications of advancement in krishna consciousness one will not be able to understand where they have to really apply themselves to make progress so the real progress comes by hearing and chanting the glories of the lord and purifying the heart the results that come by way of devotional service are given to the by the lord or taken away by the lord to assist the devotee in his service but it doesn't necessarily always mean that these are indications that i'm making advancement you have to be careful of that because it's a real subtle thing and a lot of senior devotees fall into that seeing this as the example of success in krishna consciousness the real example is how much our love for krishna is actually awakening are we becoming more attached to krishna or are we becoming more attached to the results of our spiritual activities and indicating seeing these as our success in Krishna consciousness. So that's just to point out an example of something that is very subtle, but has a very important place in our uh, getting rid of these uh, these attachments. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, that's an example. So back to the essential essential point is that um, the devotees of the Lord accept the mercy of the Lord in whatever way we, they, it comes and use it in the service of the Lord. They're not looking for anything else but to serve the Lord and how to increase the quality and uh, of their service and to inspire others to take up devotional service. These are the indications of a person who is actually making advancement in devotional service the more you want to share krishna consciousness with others that is an indication of spiritual advancement in the sense that what it shows that yes this uh, the spirit i'm becoming benefited by this but i'm not happy simply by my own apparent uh, progress in krishna consciousness i want to share that with others in other words i want to make others krishna conscious that desire will activate the lord's mercy and then the devotee will do wonderful things in order to spread krishna consciousness and some will also be in that position and may not be able to do wonderful things. But for instance, sometimes a, a good example is a devotee can do so many nice things, but the tendency Maharaj, your volume just stopped again.
Yeah, we're not hearing at all at this point. Yeah. It just cut off a few seconds ago. Hare Krishna. Maharaj? Yeah, I can't hear Maharaj. He just yeah. stopped. Uh oh, how do we stop him, Srimati? <laughs> yeah, one second. I'll I'll just contact uh, Rishabh Prabhu. I don't know his cell phone is there only. Guru Maharaj. Okay, I think he's now. Maharaj, we just um your volume just stopped. Yeah, we can't hear okay, that's Rishabh. He the dead. The devotees there. Okay. Oh, Can there you, you are. Me? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So Krishna didn't want me to, didn't want you to hear what I just said. So he arranged for the volume to go off. Can you repeat that point, much if it's okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I said Krishna didn't want you to hear what I just oh. said. <laughs> so he made sure the volume went off right at the right time. Oh. <laughs> I've seen that happen so many times. The vote is about to speak something that should not be spoken, although it's true. And then all of a sudden, the computer will not work anymore, or the cell phone will die. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> or somebody will come crashing in the room and divert the devotee's attention away. <laughs> okay, I think we uh, we spoke on this subject a little extensively. Now, of course, there were a few interruptions, so then maybe we can open it up for questions. Yes, Marge, thank you so much. It was really a very nice topic, and yeah, thank you so much i'm sure that's going to be questions i would like to ask devotees if any questions on this uh, please you can either raise your hand or just jump right in and ask your question i'm, I'm going down the list so that i don't forget anyone um I'll talk. yeah go ahead I the just, uh, yeah, please accept my whole uh, uh, should we uh, stop yeah great yeah, yes. okay yeah, uh, we of course we always ask the devotees to turn on their uh, the videos. Yeah, manifested forms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the basis, all glories to you, but all glories to you. So you brought up, hey, hey. I just said, brought up a point about when a devotee is trying to do their best, and Krishna is giving so many things, even material um and they think that it's a sign of advancement it may not necessarily be that but you make that you made that point so at that time when a devotee is getting those things material and even uh doors opening for op other opportunities what should their consciousness be it's simply krishna's mercy that's all <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, no, they, <laughs> the, te the tendency the tendency is to take credit and thinking that, you know that i'm the doer and because of how i'm doing everything all of a oh. sudden now i got it right after all these years i didn't get it right before now the results are coming and and so that tendency means to take credit for the for the results of activities, which is some a feature of the false ego. Of the ego. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it. Mm. okay, thank you, Mark. You know, just like uh, just like Anasulia just said to me right at the end, she said, "Thank you for the nice class." Now, if I believe that, I'm in trouble. <laughs> So, but she, but she's doing the right thing. It's nice to give glorifications to devotees, but those who get glorified, as Radhana Swami used to say, as soon as you get glorified, you should know you're in a dangerous position <laughs> because the false ego can also spring up and say, Haribo, yeah, thank you. 
due to my proper planning, it came out right. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> Any questions from devotees on this amazing topic and amazing class? And Maharaj, it's so true you said that, uh, you know, that devotees, generally some devotees, they don't like to speak about that world because like you said, it causes a lot of brain hemorrhage and um humor <laughs> and, <laughs> and all that bad stuff good stuff but marcia the point that you made just now you know and you were going into the verses i in and you mentioned bhakti siddhanta maharaj which book is that maharaj where he goes further into the six unfavorable principles Oh, that was that was Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Okay, yeah. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Yeah, it's called. I mean, it's it's available. It's called Bhakti Aloka. Ah, oh, okay. Bhakti Aloka. B H A K Y A L O K A. Bhakti Aloka. I did a study of the book, and I made a seminar out of that. And turned it into yeah I have yeah I used to make that as a regular seminar. It's quite extensive. It takes days and days to do it. I mean hours and hours to do it. But it's an interesting seminar. Taking each of the twelve points and then going deeper into each one of them. Thank you so much for mentioning that that book, Maharaj. And Maharaj, another question I had is when you were mentioning and you gave the example of. Um, I, I believe you gave the example of Ranga Tarangini, and you're mentioning, you know, when um, when one gets results from um, spiritual activities, um, one should not be puffed up or think that it's the benefit. So what so when there are positive results or results coming from spiritual activities, much what should our consciousness be like? You know. Oh, Krishna, because generally or naturally people think, okay, so this is going well because Krishna is manifesting his mercy or, you know, whatever. So whatever I'm doing is going the right direction. But how can you not get so attached to that, as you said, Maharaj, and be careful? Well, we have to understand it through the, through the words of the scriptures and the words of the spiritual teachers. That the living entity is simply one-fifth of the activity that is being performed the time the ingredients the endeavor and the super soul make up this is a verse in the bhagavad gita and there's five five uh active five elements of an, every activity and the final element is the super soul and so unless the super soul gives sanction or gives the result, you know, ultimately it depends on the super soul. Mm -hmm. It's not always necessarily an indication of spiritual success if everything comes out the way we wanted it. It may be the opposite. what pleases krishna is spiritual success but the, what what that particular terminology refers to is that a devotee will see these things as indications that i'm making advancement that's what tanga taranga rangini is it's not nothing wrong in these things but we'll take the credit for for the activity and see it as an as a as that now i'm making advancement i'm making more devotees i'm opening projects i'm writing books i'm so many things but the real uh, uh, indication of one's advancement is purification of the heart one may have material talents and use them in devotional service and get some kind of results but it's that's not doesn't necessarily indicate that the heart is becoming purified 
heart becomes purified when we become more and more attached to Krishna and more and more attracted to Krishna. And Maharaj, I've also had, you know, I've, I've heard questions uh, when asked how, how or is it our duty, I shouldn't say duty, but are we supposed to access ourselves, Maharaj, or how do we know that we are getting closer to Krishna? Well, Sadhu Sangha is a way for accessibility in association devotees. We can get feedback simply by the reflective nature of that association. We can start to see our own qualities and characteristics in that association. That's the best way. But, but personal introspection is also very much a part of the principle of devotional service to, to reflect, to think about where am I in my devotional service? How attached am I to Krishna? Or am I more attached to the results? Or am I more attached to the activity as opposed to being attached to Krishna? If the activity changes, does my attachment for devotional service go away or go, go less? Say I'm forced to give up my particular way of service, some, some by circumstantial arrangements or provincial arrangements, am I still enthusiastic to serve the Lord? That's a real test. And in March, when one goes through that test of times, you know, where something changes and their services change, but they have to continue serving because they know that without that, they are lost. How, how should your mindset be, Marge? Like, because some say, oh, you know, you just kick me out kind of a thing, or you just fire me from the service, you know, like I, sometimes I hear such, such comments. But then we change it for something else, but sometimes you know, one is not very happy about it. How can we help them, Marge? Or, how sh or what should our consciousness be? Well, Krishna is not, yeah, Krishna doesn't need your service. That's the point. And Krishna is Atmarama, he's self contained. He needs nothing, but the only thing Krishna wants is your devotion. That's all. Because devotion is an indication of love, and love is the principle of exchange, and love is the goal. All of these things are meant to purify us and bring us to the platform. So a service is a, is a form of sacrificing our time and energy in order to please Krishna, which will awaken our attraction and eventually our attachment to Krishna. But... If the service changes, that doesn't mean uh, our relationship with Krishna has to change because ultimately, well, I like Krishna because he lets me serve in the way I want to serve. And that's nice. Usually Krishna doesn't interfere with that because we might say it's given by the spiritual master. But circumstances do force one to change situations, services, associations. Just like all of a sudden, for an example, uh, we got two years ago around this same time, we got locked down. It happened in February, in the end of February, beginning of March 2020. So those who were doing their service in a certain way were no longer be able to do it. They were forced by this lockdown to adjust. Now, is that going to cause that a loss of enthusiasm in their service? If it does, then then somehow or other, they're seeing their services for their own benefit. So we, there might be initial loss of enthusiasm due to the transition that has to go through, but then you see how devotees have used the situation to even increase their service, seeing as Krishna's arrangement. Because a devotee can serve in any situation. 
but we have our ways to serve. We have our preferences and how we want to serve. And that is, that's not wrong, but somehow by circumstance, if something gets changed, do we lose our enthusiasm for service? Thank you, Maharaj. I was going to ask another question, but I think I'll wait for the devotees to jump in. I've asked too many, I think. <laughs> I don't want to cut anyone off. Are there other questions from devotees? Please uh, do unmute yourself and ask your question, or um, you can type your question in the chat, and I can read that question for you out to Maharaj. Just waiting for the... Anything. Marge, I'm, I'll, I'll ask my question. Marge, um, and, and when you mentioned about lockdown, right? And yes, there were a lot of situations that changes for, that changed, that has changed for many temples, many devotees, where they cannot continue their normal routine services, as they say, and it affects the enthusiasm. How can one maintain one's enthusiasm when such situations happen? Because a lot of devotees have been affected by that. Yeah, the neophyte devotees or the devotees who are not very advanced, they will be affected because they see their service as, you know, their, uh, their way of living. They, they are more attached to the service than to the served. And that's, that's a progression. In the beginning, we get more attached to the service. Later on, <clears throat> we start to see that the service is leading us to attend more and more attachment to Krishna. Then it becomes Krishna as, as the attachment and not the service. So you, you can expect that for devotees who are not so advanced. They call them neophyte devotees. But a more advanced devotee will, will, is more attached to Krishna. And therefore, they can always find ways to serve in any situation. <laughs> Yeah, it's just natural. Our service is not material, but it has a certain feature about it that we we might like. Well, I like to serve this way. Spiritual master says, well, no, actually, uh, I want you to serve this way. But I don't want to serve that way. But you should serve that way because it'll be good for you. But I'm happy serving this way. Well, I don't think you're making enough advancement. So why don't you serve? take on this other service and maybe give up this service. And that comes sometimes by directly by the spiritual master or it comes by circumstance. For instance, the lockdown is the circumstance that changed the way we were executing our services. Thank you, Maharaj. There's a post here from Dear Krishna where he said, Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada, all glories to you. I have a question about how to check if we are getting attached to Krishna, not to the service or its outcome. You already answered it beautifully. Very helpful. Thank you. As that was his chat. Dear Krishna, his name is? Yes, Prabhu. I mean, yes, Maharaj, sorry. Yeah, Dear Krishna, Prabhu, in Reading. Maharaj, oh, okay. I, I think you oh, met. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah, very, uh, uh, very active devotee in preaching Krishna consciousness. Yes, yes, always finding ways to somehow serve the Lord in some innovative way. <laughs> yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Any questions from devotees? Okay, uh, if there isn't, Maharaj, would you like to end with what there is? Bhakta Brett, go ahead, Bhakta Brett. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, you were talking with Mother Anasi about you know, not being attached to the action we are currently doing and not being attached to the fruits of the action. Um, yesterday, Bhutta Bhavana Das gave class for you, um, and he was talking about how in this advanced materialistic society, devotees and, and non-devotees especially, 
are always trying to, you know, validate their opinion and, you know, be correct in, in where they are with the intelligence that they currently have. Um, my question is, Maharaj, how do we help devotees and ourselves, you know, curb this constant want for validation or to be validated and remember our constitutional position as Das Anudas? Yeah, it's a good question. And, and it's also a very, it's also, Hmm? Can you hear me now? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, it's a very good question. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Now? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have Rishabh here. He knows what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good one because you'll see this is very prominent in the material world. And when people do something, they expect something from that activity, even if it's just a thank you. <laughs> You know, so something to validate that they, they did something and it was beneficial. Um, but, and then that may come. And if it comes, fine. But if it doesn't come, then uh, a devotee thinks, well, I don't really need that. It's the act. The idea is that devotional service in itself is satisfying and that what happens as a result of devotional service. But we haven't come to that stage of actually relishing the activity of service in and of itself. And we look for something extra or something else to somehow, as you say, use the word validate, which is really the perfect uh, description. Oh, I did this. Maybe I don't want anything, but just to someone to say, well, thank you. <laughs> Just like um, <laughs> I was at a program a couple of weeks ago and um, there were different people there and some of them I knew, some of them I didn't know. And uh, so I, uh, um, um, we were in this one room and it was quite cold. And so I, I had this um, charter, very first class quality charter, nice and heavy, it was keeping me warm. And so there was one girl there and she didn't have hardly anything on and, and I could see it. And, I, and she was about to lead the kirtan, she was on the harmonia. And I had seen her once before, I didn't know her. So I, I took off my charter and I gave it to her. And she immediately took it because she was cold. And then after some time, I said to her, you can keep it. And uh, she didn't say anything. She just kept wearing it and went on with her service and didn't say anything to me after that. I kept the charter. <laughs> I never said anything the whole night. <laughs> In fact, I think she even ignored me. <laughs> so, um, but then I didn't really, uh, really take it too serious, but I was thinking, hmm, she didn't even say thank you. <laughs> so I was thinking, you know, maybe I should have got that much out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, you know, the whole night, and so she kept it, and she still has it. <laughs> and so, so there was another lady with her who was also her friend. And I, you know, I didn't expect this, but about a about a week later, that other lady came and gave me a gift of a nice and a nice beautiful scarf something similar to what I had, but not 
of the same quality, but it was also very nice in and in and of itself. So I was thinking, hmm, I think she did that because I gave her friend this, that the girl who actually did it, I gave it to her. I got no reciprocation at all. And at first I was a little, I wasn't, I wasn't disappointed. I was just surprised that nothing came back. You know? <laughs> It was like more like a surprise. No, I, all right, fine. <laughs> I'm happy you're warm. <laughs> so yeah, and then, but then again, there would be times where we want real, real validations, like when if we give a class, and then we're thinking, and there's no questions at the end of the class. <laughs> <laughs> then you think, hmm, I gave the best class I ever gave and there's no questions. <laughs> and sometimes you give a class and you kind of stumble through it and you're just running this way and that way looking for ideas to say. And at the end, everybody asks these questions and then somebody comes up to you and says, boy, that was a nice class. <laughs> So what, what is Krishna doing? He's telling you, yeah, you're so attached to the results, but I'm showing you that the results are not what you think they are. The results are, if you please me, then I, then that's the real result. If it's not, if, if Krishna is not pleased, no matter how nice it may appear, it, it's it's from Eva Hikavala, it's useless. Did that, Dr. Brad, did that help, Prabhu? Yeah, well, the yeah, idea is not, that. yeah, the idea is, you know, we just have to go, we have to take, we have to find satisfaction in the service itself and not in the results. Yeah, absolutely, Maharaj. I was talking to a young devotee um, in Temple this past, or last Sunday, or this past Saturday, and I, and I brought up that same point you just said, Maharaj, you know, this, we have to carry this practical service attitude throughout our our interactions with devotees and non-devotees. So how do you, well, you, know, when, you are, when you understand the power of devotional service, one is grateful just for the opportunity to serve. Mm. And that's the that's that's the happiness. You see that a lot of time within the in Indian culture, because they're trained in that way that, that they find more happiness in service. Than in being served, because um, that's that's more like the tradition and the culture. The Western mentality is more the other way around: <laughs> getting something from the service. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj. thank you. Mm -hmm. thank Just you like in your past time, I, I, I give you a nice, a nice little example. <clears throat> It's because of modern times, things are changing. But traditionally, if if you're in India, if you're with people, and you and uh, they do something for you, and you say thank you, they feel unhappy because of that. Because you're actually breaking the actual connection between them by formalizing it, by saying thank you. Whereas you don't have to say thank you to me because my happiness is to serve you. That's the mood. So why are you thanking me? I'm doing it because I, 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 I get happiness simply by serving. So well, no, what is the question of thank you? So that whole terminology, thank you, is something that's come up in the, in the modern day in Western society as a way to validate uh, a person's activities in a positive way. But traditionally, if you said thank you, you're, you're actually breaking the relationship. Or you're formalizing it, you're putting it on a more like a, um, you're breaking the intimacy of that connection. You're more like making it just an ordinary thing. 
but that's changing now. Now even India is like that. People say thank you <laughs> because of the influence of Western culture. Just like in, in the culture in India is that if it's your birthday, you give everybody presents. That's the that's that's the Indian culture. And now, but the other thing is, we grew up in the West is that you get presents on your birthday. <laughs> Right, you know that. <laughs> right, you when you when if it's your birthday, you find people to give presents to. That's that's how you celebrate your birthday. <laughs> that's traditional, but you know everything has changed around. Hare Krishna Maharaj. We got Mani Ma is asking for blessings on her new entry into her new occupation. Yes, Maharaj, and she's asking you what is for her for blessings as she goes into work right now. <laughs> I believe she uh, it's something to do with in the behavioral field, dealing with kids, I think, children, something like that. Marsh, you are on mute. We lost you again. Marsh, we can't hear you. Oh, Krishna. Yeah. Rishav Das Prabhu, can you fix Marsh's volume? It went out again. How's that? Perfect, Maharaj. <laughs> I did it. Okay. All right. I did it. So here I'm taking credit now. Okay. <laughs> and Maharaj, we missed your blessings for Mamina. <laughs> well, I, I, my blessing was no. not to, remember, to, to always remember Krishna. Hari well. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> We I have a, you, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to do the same thing. Yeah, Aditya has a question. Go ahead, Aditya. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I think you gave a really wonderful class and it really resonated with me personally, and especially the example you gave um, with Prabhupada as, you know, he was trying to preach uh, in India to create a foundation for the Krishna wasn't having it so he took all the desires all his uh, material um, you know advanced spiritual advancement there in terms of the foundation away and so uh, i was wondering how i can i can deal with you know the material desires that i have in terms when krishna takes everything away you know uh, i think you previously answered this a little bit whenever uh, Pariksha Maharaj asked, uh, Pariksha Pilbara asked you know it's just krishna Majesty. I was wondering if you could comment on how to, you know, no, I just, I just, if, if Krishna's taking things away, he's leaving you with something that will help you progress. That you have to understand. <clears throat> he never takes everything away and then doesn't give you anything in return. <clears throat> but sometimes we can't see that because we're, we're more focused on what's, what's, what we're losing about other as opposed to what we're gaining. He's giving us something else to see or to understand or to replace. He'll never take away your devotional service. That he won't do. But he may take on how how it's being executed or the the or the or the uh, ingredients that you have that you're using in devotional service. That may also change. <clears throat> So if you see it that way, then you have to think, well, what's Krishna doing and how can I benefit? So when you ask that question, well, how can I benefit from what's happening here? What can, what can I learn from what's happening here? Then you start to open up the doors to understanding what Krishna is doing and why he's doing it and how it is actually beneficial. <clears throat> 
but he'll always leave you with devotional service that he won't take away. The only way you lose devotional service is when you offend Vaishnavas. Then that becomes an opportunity. That becomes a, a feature where Krishna will marginalize the devotee's ability to associate with other devotees because of that, and devotional service will also be <clears throat> lessened because of that. But otherwise, if that is not there, otherwise Krishna is always doing something to help us recognize our, our something we don't need in Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> so it's good to reflect on what's happening to you, especially after you do something in devotional service. <laughs> And see if, if if you're feeling satisfied with what's happening, that's an indication that Krishna's pleased. If there's something is if you're going on in devotional service and there's some some dissatisfaction, you know, that that dissatisfaction is an also an indication by Krishna within the heart that something is needs to change and something needs to be improved. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharaj. That, that completely, uh, I completely understand what you mean. It's really helpful for me to understand. I'm going to try to implement that. And, you know, thank you for the answer. It really helps me. Yeah, Krishna is all good. So if you have that in mind, then you are going to understand that whatever he's doing, it has a, a, a purpose behind it, a beneficial thing. Yep, Maharaj. Hopefully, I can understand that too. Very well. That's why association with devotees helps us to come to that understanding. That's important. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. I think we took more of your time than we had planned. We apologize for that, Maharaj. But just want to ask devotees if there's any last minute questions, uh, um, any last minute uh, clarification that one need, please do jump right in. And if there is, isn't, Maharaj, would you like to end with one round of chanting, Maharaj? Uh, unless you have something, you know, that you have to go pressing, that's completely fine too, whatever suits you, Maharaj. No, I guess the next thing on my agenda is lunch, but... Um, huh? Uh, I've been just giving the word by Srimad Rishabh Dave that I have time. <laughs> okay. <laughs>